Hey, welcome to Question Mark, a safe place to ask your dangerous questions about God, the Bible, Christianity, philosophy, and science. My name is Mark, and I will be your host. If you've got any questions that you have about the Bible you'd like for us to put a little video on, go ahead and knock it in the comments below, and we will do our best to get to all of the questions that we possibly can. The story is told of a kid who goes to his mom and says, Mom, where did we come from? And mom says, we came from Adam and Eve and uh, Cain and Abel and Seth and all of their people and eventually became all the people in the world. And the kid goes to dad and says, Dad, where did we come from? And dad says, we came from monkeys and apes, son. And confused, he goes back to his mom and says, Mom, Dad says we came from apes. You say we came from Adam and Eve. What's the story here? She says, I was talking about my side of the family. Your father was talking about his side of the family. Brings up a good question about evolution. Can you be a Christian and believe in evolution? Can you believe in the Bible and believe about evolution? Some people who were raised in Christian households were raised with the idea of evolution being a naughty word that Christians can never buy into. And for other people, evolution is kind of a religion even in itself. And we have to ask the question, can you believe the Bible and believe evolution? And I think the answer to that question is yes and no. Here's what I mean by that. If you are saying by, when you talk about evolution, if you're saying by evolution, what I mean is evolution as a process, three S's, a process, well then the answer is yes, you can absolutely believe in evolution as a process. What do I mean by that? Well, evolution as a process is all about change. This is the symbol delta for change over time. And if you're asking the question, do organisms change over time? I think the obvious scientific answer is yes. You probably remember going all the way back to uh, your high school days, studying a little study about the scientific revolution. Uh, I'm sorry, the industrial revolution when they had these little butterflies, uh, peppered moths actually, and when the peppered moths were white and black, and before the Industrial Revolution, when the trees that they stayed on were light-colored trees, the light-colored moths thrived, but when the soot came on the trees from the Industrial Revolution, it was the dark-colored moths that thrived. And in that, you could see genetic mutations, and you could see survival of the fittest taking place, in a very micro and obvious way, and you go, well, if that's what we're talking about with evolution, then certainly it happens. It's observable. We can see genetic differences, genetic anomalies that happen in organisms. We can see that some survive and some don't, and some are better fit for survival than others are, and perhaps there would be some adaptations that make sense on a micro level. Can you be somebody who's a follower of Jesus and believe that? The answer is absolutely yes. Now, there's one important caveat that's behind that. Because while we can see these teeny tiny pieces of change that happen over time, there are other changes that are much bigger and much more significant. These are the issue of macroevolution, very complex organs, organisms brains, mitochondria, brilliant little pieces of engineering that seem to have a designer behind them. In fact, one piece of evolution, one factor that changes, couldn't bring them into being. I'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment, but they're so large and they're so complex that we couldn't believe that they happen all by themselves. In fact, in order to believe in evolution as a process, it seems to make an awful lot of sense that there is a God who is behind the process, designing things the entire time. That in fact, it's a God that makes these mechanisms possible and God that makes the processes work in each of these mechanisms. 
He's the one who's the designer and the engineer, and he in fact designed them in order to be able to work in processes over time. But the other half of the equation, the no half of the equation is asking, well, what about evolution not as a process? What about evolution as a philosophy? What I mean by that is that there are some people who believe in evolution and they say, when you're talking about evolution, what you're talking about is chance, that's random mutations, plus fate, and that's survival of the fittest. Evolution as a philosophy says that there's no designer that's behind it. There's no intelligent life that's behind it. It's just something that happened onto the scene. Well, this is an atheistic philosophy that is in contradiction to what the Bible has to say. And it's something that's not only not biblically plausible, it's honestly not scientifically plausible. There was a watershed work that was done by a person by the name of Michael Behe, who is a professor in Iowa. And he wrote a book called Darwin's Black Box about the principle of irreducible complexity. And that is, in simple machines, certain things are irreducibly complex. A, a mousetrap is a great illustration. A mousetrap needs the cheese, it needs the lever, it needs the spring, it needs the flippy thing, and it needs the base. Five key pieces, and if you take any one of them out of the equation, well, the mousetrap just doesn't work. In evolution, there's oftentimes the idea that if you just get one change, it will become advantageous and help you to be able to thrive. But the truth is, for a mousetrap, you have to have all five changes at the exact same time in order to have that simple machine. And the question is, are living beings more or less complex? Well, Michael Behe was a uh, microbiologist and he decided that he would take a look at this. So he looked at it in very simple one-celled organisms. And he asked the question, inside these little one-celled organisms with all their funky things and all the little pieces that were around them, uh, does it seem like it's more or less complex than a mousetrap? And what if you look at a, one bacteria? In fact, what if you look at one section of one bacteria what if you look at that little hair called a flagellum that comes out of the back of the bacteria? And what if you look at the motor that makes that flagellum go brrrr in order to give it locomotion? Because if it doesn't have locomotion, it's not going to be able to have life. Is that motor irreducibly complex? And he determined that it is. In fact, there are 35 components of the motor for a bacterial flagellum that all have to work in order for it to work, which means they would have had to have 35 simultaneous positive evolutions in order for just that simple part of this simple organism to be able to work. Well, Einstein's second law of thermodynamics says that everything is breaking down, that it's extremely unlikely for any positive anomalies to come into this world, and it's simply not plausible to believe that those 35 evolutions would happen at the same time without a designer that's behind it. Well, that's just one simple illustration. You get into far more complicated things in this world. Things like, think about an eye, or you think about a brain, and you ask the question, how much more complicated is that than the motor for a bacterial flagellum? And how many simultaneous evolutions would have to happen to make that plausible? The truth of the matter is, without a designer behind it, it simply doesn't make sense. Now, with the idea that there really is somebody who's behind it all, Christians wind up coming to some different kinds of conclusions about how that process happened. Some think that it happened, boom, all at once, and no creation happened after that point. There are some people who say that God used processes over time in order to be able to make that happen. In fact, there are some people who say God intervened at certain moments, and that when you look at the fossil record, what you find is long periods of stasis and then a dramatic change, and a long period of stasis and then a bunch of dramatic changes that looks like there were certain moments where there was a divine intervention for that change. This is called by scientists punctuated equilibrium. 
And by many theists, they would say this just looks like the intervention of God. There are others who believe in theistic evolution that say, you know, God just wrote into the DNA code all the way from the beginning this ability to be able to adapt and change over time. And isn't it amazing that God thought of it from the beginning? And whatever you believe in any of those three, those are all biblical possibilities. But what's a biblical impossibility is that there was no thought, no creator that was behind it. In fact, I think if you're just an honest scientist, you would come to the conclusion that it doesn't make sense for life to spring from non-life, for intelligence to spring from non-intelligence, for love to spring from non-love, for millions of positive evolutions to happen in order to make the organisms that we see in this world a plausible reality. It just begs for God. Evolution as a philosophy? No. Evolution as a process? Certainly. And God is in the middle of it all. Well, thanks for watching. If you like this video and you'd love to see more like it, perhaps you'd like to start with this video right here. And if you love these videos, it would be fantastic if you would like, subscribe, or ring the bell for notifications.